Do you know why man size Kleenex are man size? Um, people with big hands and big noses? No. Wanking. Talk to me. How do you feel? Quite nervous. But, <clears throat> you know, in a totally relaxed, kind of, you know, ambient way. This is, this is so weird. <laughs> what are you going to ask me? It's Have you written these down or are you just going to ad lib? I'm just, we're just going to ad lib. <clears throat> okay, go on. Um, I'm going to put my hand in my pocket for that kind of comfort. Casual look for the. Yeah. yeah. You can have. Yeah. So, what's brought this on? I mean, I think I know. But what, what's, brought, what's brought the, this interview on? Mm. Well, it's just got to a point now with, with the, the channel and this that it's becoming a bit stupid. Um, the whole face reveal thing has been, yeah, it was never, I never started my channel to purposefully hide my face. It was just the first few videos. It happened to work out that way because I was just on the bike doing stuff. And then people got kind of excited like, oh, it's, oh who's this identity thing? And it's like, oh, right, well, I'll play along with that for a bit. And then it starts getting weird after a while and then people start stalking you and like, oh, yeah. And then it's like, oh, I can see your reflection in the mirror mm. at four minutes. And you're just like... Can't be bothered. <clears throat> and then a, a big highlight was when I went to the TT the other year and I had to interview Guy Martin with a helmet on. Mm. It, was, it, was, it was embarrassing. Mm. It was embarrassing. And, you know, if, they, if I'm going to try and grow 44 teeth and my channel and you know, do more of these things, it's inhibiting having to wear a helmet. You know, for the Guy Martin thing, we started it with a helmet and ended it with a helmet, but I took it off in the middle because it's just... You can't engage... You can't get something out of someone when you're sat there wearing a crash helmet with like a reflective visor on you can't you know see what that person's really thinking and uh, and it's just it's a bit rude I find so for interviews and stuff definitely um, I think this has to happen it's just a natural progression and it'll make our filming easier as you know it's like we want to do something it's like oh hang on I'll go, go get a crash helmet from somewhere and, mm. and, and do all that and it, don't get me wrong it's been funny it's been great and you know the image of someone in full leathers and a helmet in Starbucks having a coffee is great as a photograph or three seconds of video. But after that, the a joke's vine. a vine, yeah. yeah. But after that, the joke's gone. Yeah, you know there there is no more. There's no more meat after that. Especially. I guess I guess in many ways it's run its course, and I hate using this phrase, but it's used a lot. You are a victim of your own success, and it's it's time that. Like the M25. Like the M25, you say? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Ginsters. Yeah. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's run its course. It's time to, to sort of man up. I mean, uh, going back to the early days, and I remember you talking to me about an interview, uh, or sorry, in an interview we did with, uh, with Fast Bikes a few mm. years ago, and you were saying you had people coming around your house yeah. and tracking your IP addresses and... Yeah, there's some proper stalkers out mm. there. And, you know, I've, I've, never, I've never gone... So, there's only so much you can do to hide your identity. Most people know who I am. Within five seconds of Google, you can pretty much find quite a lot of stuff. But, you know, when I was married and I had a young kid in the house, privacy was, was really important to me. You know, I, I, I didn't want this world mixing with that world. And, but then when people start coming around your house, it's just like, it's what fucked. are you doing? You freak. Yeah. What are you doing? I mean, it's not like I'm Brad Pitt. I mean, I know I look a lot like yeah, him. Or yeah. Keanu Reeves. Yeah. Or any of the other handsome fellows that are yeah. on the internet mm. and films. Um, but there's, there's a line, you know, that after that happened a few times, it's like, I'm not doing this anymore. And it's, it's, it's just, it just makes life difficult. It just makes life difficult. And people see it as a game. People see it as like, oh, I'm going to find out who it is. And then it's, you know, it's not a game. It's just, I just make videos about bikes. I just want to to have a laugh on bikes and you know and then, then I get accused of oversharing which is another thing like for, I mean I never go onto forums anymore because it's just a load of shit but it's you know you read you, in the earlier days I'd read some of this stuff and it's, it's heartbreaking to be honest mm. with you and then you think well hang on I'm only I'm only just kind of it's a guy who rides a bike talking about his life and slightly then you get, opinionated slightly opinionated absolutely but, but you know it's, it's, not, it's not as if I run my day to day life away from camera like that I'm not the same person you, you, know, you, you put on a mask effectively that helmet is a mask and so you do kind of treat things a little bit more differently but you know the, the whole kind of um, 
oversharing thing, get accused of that. It's like, well, I'm just telling you about my life. You don't have to look any further into it. You don't have to then make up a load of stuff that you think happened and then judge people. Because there's so much, you know, all the bloggers and vloggers and these people that rhyme with loggers, they all, <laughs> they, they're, they're not the same person in, in real life. And it's just, a, it's just a thing on social media. And people get so wound up about it and they want to get in there and kind of have a right shit stir. And they make up a load of things that they think might have happened to you, but it's utter bollocks. What is it? I mean, the, the internet now, particularly YouTube, has become a free license to be a Jeremy Hunt. Mm. What is it? What? What? Why? Why is this 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 social evil social world developed into people hiding behind a keyboard and because a lot of these people that do provide like the, the trolls the abuse, you're talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. They wouldn't do it to your face. They wouldn't pick up the phone. They wouldn't, you know, no. and. and well, it's the blanket of anonymity that gives them the confidence to do that. And, um, you know, that I, I've, I've, don't get me wrong, I've learned lots of lessons. You know, throughout the last four years I've been doing this, um, there's things I won't do now that I would have done in the earlier days, which arguably would have made for better content because it's more opinionated and it's more like, bam, straight out there. But the more you say things, the more you see that feedback coming back, it ends up getting slightly diluted just by the nature of, you know, the bigger it, the audience grows, the more people you are exposing yourself to, not in like a flash of Mac way, but the more people you expose your opinions to, then the more people comment. And it just, it does necessarily just kind of, it, well, it, it just filters down. But, you know, the, the, way, the way that the trolls behave, I don't know what it is. It's just like, a, you know, they're obviously butthurt people in real life with nothing going for them. And mm. they feel that they want to have an online presence. And it's much easier to get a reaction out of someone to call them a C-nut than go, oh, thanks, mate, that was a really nice video. And I'm guilty of that as well. I'll, I'll look through the comments. There'll be a hundred saying, oh, I love your video. You know, really happy that everything's going really well for you. Love all that. And it's like, yeah, 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 whatever, whatever, whatever. And, and then you're someone dick. says, dick. And you're like, yeah, well, you're a fucking dick. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's, but, that's the one you take home. But over the, over the years, I, I'm, I, my skin is getting thicker. If you want to put... People say, oh, you asked for this. You put yourself in the public eye. You asked for this abuse. It's like, well, n no, I didn't. I just made some videos. People started liking it and watched more. And then more people watched more and more people watched more. And it's like, I didn't ask for that. I didn't set out with an intention of becoming a bike journalist. No way. I didn't, I didn't think of that at all. But it's this perception of you put yourself in the public eye. Now you're fair game for me to rip into you and be a prick. And it's like, well... I didn't. It's not like I went out and got a job and got paid to do something. You put effort and time into something, and fortunately it's grown into something which hopefully will continue and be successful. Um, but that thing about people saying, you asked for this, is completely wrong. Footballers want to play football. All they want to do is play football. They grow up, okay, yeah. there's a bit of, you know, obviously the money and everything else is, is, is there, but there's none of that in motorcycling as you've no. sort of worked out in the past year. Yeah. Um, but putting yourself in the public limelight on purpose and uh, just it's, it's just, not for that there, no. there are, don't get me wrong there are probably a few people out there who just want to be famous mm. but they're probably the ones that are never going to be famous because they don't have anything about them that is, anything, that is engaging but the guy who just wants to play football just wants to play football the actor that just wants to act that's what they want to do they're, the boundary of when these women go on holiday when they're with their own families and you've got paparazzi with a zoom lens trying to take the most unattractive picture of them possible and posting it all over Hello or other magazines are available um, that's disgusting that's disgusting because it's just a gossip it's just a gossipy pool of shit and, uh, and ultimately that is what the media is isn't it Yeah. it's the same with news, news report so going back to the, the early years yeah why did you, I mean, I know, for the benefit of <clears throat> newer people. Yeah. Why did you start it all? What, you know, because in many ways, I, I wasn't into vlogging and I thought it was a little bit weird to start off with all those years ago and I couldn't understand it. And it, and then when I sort of, without, you know, bending over and, or you bending over, I sort of got into your stuff and found it quite funny and then romance began and then romance began and blossomed <laughs> into this office in Farnham into this yeah this is our new office by the way yeah if you could see behind uh, it's, no. it's not yeah. Yeah. Um, shh 
So, uh, God, put your tits away. Fucking hell. God, I told you, Gareth, put your tits away. Um, Jeremy. The, uh, why did it, why did I start? So, Ollie333, um, he works for me. Used to, kind of still does work for me. And he used to do it with his mates. And he'd be like, oh, look at this, I'm doing this. And I was like, oh, that is fucking, that is for losers. That is so <laughs> shit. I'm glad you're saying that. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh, bunch of nerds. And then he was like, you should do it. And I was like, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a loser. <laughs> and, then, um, and then I kept getting, uh, my commute was, as you know, is, was an hour and 20 minutes into London each way. So, you know, it's like two and a half hours a day. On a bike. On a motorcycle, mm. all weather, snow, weighing, Wayne, Wayne, Snow, Wayne Wooney, Wayne Wayney, uh, Wayne Gwaney, um, all the other Waynes, and the, and it was just boring. It just got so boring, and then I kept getting, and then I started to speed and do slightly dodgy things, and then I kept getting pulled over. So then I thought, okay, well look, I need something that's going to keep me entertained and help re- self-regulate my riding because if you've got a camera on, you're not going to do as stupid shit as you would when it's off. So I was like, okay, I'll give it a go. And then just made a video, and it seems to go down really well. Because Ollie then shared it and said, oh, yeah, my friend's doing this. Um, and it went down really well. And I thought, and I actually, I got a buzz out of it. I got a buzz out of reading the comments that I'd made something, and I put it out to the public. Because um, in my traditional day job, it's business to business, graphic design, motion graphics, animation. Oh, so just, yeah, like dealing with, you know, accounts and, you know, client satisfaction so it was all a closed circuit and then the the whole social media thing it gave me a buzz and I was like oh I quite like this so then I just did another video and then another one and then another one and then and and that was it and that was it and um I'm still I still do it (laughs) that's it you haven't grown up haven't grown up yeah um you know so and that's and that's how it started arguably Mm-hmm. the video that made you <laughs> mm-hmm. or broke broke you one of the two yeah I know what's coming um, has to be the GSXR green lane video yep what the bloody hell I didn't as much as it looks planned mm. it wasn't planned as much as I say oh you know, I'm going to go to a green lane I didn't I had no idea I was completely idiot I had no idea that it would be that bad I was expecting like a gravel driveway kind of thing like a little footpath like oh great fine and I was on the way it was summer I was on the way to see my dad to watch the Grand Prix and um, <clears throat> I thought oh I've been on the website the night before the, the what is it F1 no the, BBC the, the, Radio the, Times no the Green Lane the oh right Trail yeah. Association T- Trial Raiders so TRA yeah, yeah. them uh, and there was loads around my house. So I was like, oh, there's actually one here on the way. So I was thinking, oh, I'll just go down there, have a little, have a little see, see what it's about. And, um, like we did in the Lex Motos. Yeah, well, that but was the same, same yeah. place, but yeah, yeah horrifically wet. And um, yeah, got down there and uh, yeah, struggled, as the video shows many times. And then I couldn't, I couldn't turn it around. I didn't know how to ride off-road, really. I mean, it's difficult, but really, should have been, I should have been in a rut going through it but because of the fairings and the tyres so I was sat on top of it and then I couldn't turn it round because if I turned it round to go back out the rear wheel would have sunk and the front wheel would have sunk and I've just beached it so I was like well I'll just have to go forward almost made it I, actually do you know what I think it did pretty well that bike considering the pilot had no clue what he was doing mm. uh, I, I forgot to take it out of 180 brake horsepower mode which was stupid. I should have put it in rain. Of course, because 120 horsepower just instantly solved the issues, isn't it? Well, it would have been better. I should have let the tyres down a bit. I should have done all these things, but I, I didn't. I was panicking. I was genuinely scared. I was genuinely scared. And then I managed to get out the first bit, crashed it once, got through, and then there was another bit the other side, and I just thought, I'm not going through there. I'm going to turn around. There was an opportunity to turn around, so I went back and uh, capsized. And then I got back and thought, and I was freaking out. Because I had no cell phone reception either. Mobile phone reception. Um, so it was a pretty dangerous thing to do. It's a pretty stupid thing to do. Even going off-roading on a proper bike on your own is not advisable. And, uh, yeah, so I got back home. I didn't make it to my dad's. and um, Missed the F1. 
missed the F1. Yeah. And um, then I thought, well, hang on, let's look through the video. And then I thought, this is pretty funny. And then um, I composed all the music for that as well, actually, in Garage Band. <laughs> oh, really? I, did, I had no idea it was uh, of such low quality. I mm. yeah. know, oh, okay, I guess I did it in something else. I, did, I composed it on uh, my, what, what are good pianos called? Casio Tone Banks? No. I was going to say St- Steinway. Is that a piano? Steinheiser. Steinheit. I don't know. Stein. Anyway. But, but Cork. Yeah. Cork. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Yamaha. <coughs> um, who make pianos and motorbikes. Mm. Of course. Hence the tuning forks. Anyway. Yeah, um, yeah so they composed the music and uh, it was a bit, of a, a bit of a hit. But interestingly, still only half a million views now. Mm. Whereas... Ducati 899 video is 800,000. So, just goes to show, you never know, even though I'm well known for that green lane, more people have seen me review an 899. I think it's amazing now where you look at what's popular and what's not, and there's no yeah. magic formula, there's no instant success, <clears throat> there's no sort of set formula for, for, for what's good and what works no. or not. And, you know, you put, you spend, you could spend a week on editing a slick as chuff video. Oh, yeah. And no, or you could so. spend ten minutes talking to a camera, looking at the bike, and it get a hundred thousand times yeah. more views. Well, to, and to prove that point, if you look on my channel, uh, the highest viewed video is me walking around my mate's garage with my blade on a paddock stand, just testing out the GP shifter, HM GP shifter, and uh, that's got two point five million or something, and. It, it it was shot on the phone, and yeah, the only uh, the only explanation I've got for the viewership is the fact that the thumbnail is a flaming exhaust. Mm. So thumbnails matter, mm, definitely. So what would you, you know, in terms because vlogging now, I thought that it peaked probably a couple of years ago, but it's it's ridiculous the amount of yeah. people that write to us, you, um, telling us that they started up and they aspire to be the next BVG. I mean. So, <laughs> I wouldn't want to be, um, no. but then again, these guys don't know you yet. So, I mean, what would you what would you say to an aspiring vlogger? Um, I think it's different now. I think I I started. I was lucky. There was a window of being easily discoverable because the market wasn't as big. You know, there's there's got to be a hundred times more now than there were than there were four At years least. ago. So your likelihood of getting, of your channel exploding is less. However, you know, the more, there's more people interested in watching it now. So, you know, it's one of those things. But yeah, I, I, I was lucky I was in that part of that golden window. And, you know, in terms of worldwide, the States has, you know, they have way more subscriber video bloggers than the UK. The UK is kind of, oh yeah, stuck in the corner. But... Um, but yeah, I think I was pretty lucky to be in that in that window. Um, so in terms of now, the only thing you can do is make great content and hope that people will watch it. And if it is good, people will watch it, and people like me will watch it and go, "Oh, that was nice," and share and share it and go check out this guy. You know, not once I don't believe I, I recall ever. Did I send emails or tweets or anything to to any of the other larger subscriber people at the time saying, oh, can you promote my channel or can you check this out and share it? It would help me out a lot. Not once did I do that. And um, I don't mind getting emails or um, things like that. I mean, it's just, that's just what happens. But it's not going to make that much of a big difference. You know, I will stumble across it if it's good content. And I mean, there's stuff that will slip through the window, but... You know, so I think it's always about always do the content that you want to make and make it well and make it engaging um, and stick to your kind of principles of, uh, of what you are, you know, uh, and make the stuff you want to make. Because if you don't, you may end up doing stuff you just don't want to do. And then it becomes a chore and it's not, it's not exciting or, or interesting for you anymore. I think one of the most prominent questions has to be, Are we still going to call you Baron? Oh, no. Well, you can call me Baron. 